What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash I do work here lady. Alright, this story's called, Yes ma'am, I can help you. No, please stop harassing the other customers who clearly don't work here. This happened years ago when I was fresh out of college. I got a job at a retailer known for their outdoor wear and equipment. It was my second holiday season there and I was working the front desk kiosk for online ordering. I looked young at the time and am on the shorter side but still very obviously behind a kiosk and working there. The employees wear very distinct shirts with khakis. There was a woman and her daughter, crossdresser? <laughs> I was helping order a specific color of a snowshoe that our location did not carry. While in the middle of the order, a uh, Karen came marching over to the machine. The following is what happened. Karen to crossdresser. Oh, excellent. They already called you and had the order process started. Crossdresser looking at Karen like she's crazy. I'm sorry? Ma'am, can I? Karen looking over crossdresser's shoulder and cutting me off. That's the wrong size. I need an X. Ma'am, uh, this customer is ordering for herself. An employee is ordering something during their shift. Gift? I don't work here. Excuse me? Did you just call me a liar? Ma'am, she's a customer ordering for herself. If you would please wait to the side, I can help you when we're done. This is outrageous! I just stood in line for 45 minutes to be told you don't have the color I want. And now this employee who's acting like she doesn't even work here is ordering the last one in the color I need and you are preventing me from ordering? Or something like that. I don't remember verbatim. Crossdresser, who had been continuing her order with her daughter while I dealt with Karen. Thank you, OP. I'm all set. Turns to Karen. And once again, I do not work here. They left. I demand to speak with the manager about how that employee spoke to me. Ma'am, please, for the last time, she was a customer with her daughter ordering snowshoes the same way you want to. I am the employee. I can help you. You should wear something that makes you stand out as an employee. Wearing the whole uniform? Noted. I never saw her again, but man, that was a tough one to keep a straight face for. <laughs> Especially when dealing with a crossdresser. <laughs> Uh, just kidding. Just because he cross-dressed doesn't mean you're gay. Anyway, um, funny story. I don't, I don't understand how this Karen made that mistake. Probably some sort of brain worm. All right, this story's called Grouchy Old Regular. Okay, so to start this off, I used to work at a swimming pool on a military base. We catered mostly to the military personnel and their families, but as we were the only pool in town, also welcomed other members of the community. So I've been working there for almost a year, and it was at the time that our pool shuts down for maintenance. I got a call from my boss asking if I wanted to come in for some easy work. I had to go to a different building operated by our parent company that was doing stock and make sure they weren't lying about anything. I don't know why they got a lifeguard to do it. It may have been because they couldn't give us much else to do and I had no relation to this other building at all. So a few days later, I go and do the job and am instructed to hand the paperwork into my boss's mailbox, which is in the same office in the pool area. We get the keys from the back door to the front desk usually. So I went to walk around to get them when one of the regulars at the pool, he was going in to use the gym also located in the building stops me and asks if i have id on me i respond yeah why to which he says this is a military pool meant for military i need to see your id and you can't just walk by without signing in and then he goes off about how disrespected the military are in our community and he doesn't know why we were welcome here i'm trying to get a word in to say that i work here but he just keeps going on and on also in the I was a pretty scrawny 17 year old at the time and this guy was a six foot three military dude who could crush me with one hand. All this time the lady at the front desk who knew exactly who I was is trying not to laugh and eventually when he turns to her to scoff at my disrespect, I was literally standing there not knowing what to do, does she tell him that I work there? Was his response to apologize? 
No. Was it to acknowledge me in any way? No. He just took back his card that had been scanned and was sitting on the counter and walked to the gym. It was kind of funny seeing him at Lane Swim when the pool opened back up. And it's, y'all are making me feel a lot better about my grip. Uh, <laughs> I bet you he felt really embarrassed after that. So much so he couldn't even face you. Uh, that's funny. All right, this story's called In Which It Is 2018 and Women Don't Work Here and Also Can't Drive. This was a very memorable winter trip I took on a poorly designed and maintained vessel, carrying explosives from Poland to Canada via the Kiel Canal. There are three people whose job it is to steer in four-hour shifts, under the orders of the mate, captain, or pilot, with the captain having emergency veto power, basically. Through no fault of their own, one of the other other two guys was just dog water at steering, while the other one was okay but not great. Not to toot my own horn, but I'm pretty good. Definitely not at the level of the 30-year wheelsmen on the northern rivers who casually Tokyo drift thousand-foot ore boats every week into a tiny canal, but more than a match for that particular vessel. Background info. American women are probably 8% of the merchant marine. Of those, most are cooks, while many of the rest are officer cadets. In other countries, the percentage is probably 0% to 2%, so I'm not sure I entirely blame the guy for what happened. Also, there are varying levels of trust that a harbor pilot can give you, which range from insultingly micromanaging to basically being a tour guide. We took on a pilot going to Gdansk, and since we were within pilot boat range, the captain was on the bridge giving the steering orders while the mate was keeping an eye on things. I wasn't even supposed to to be steering that time of day, but I was happy to be inside instead of throwing heaving lines, which I'm dog water at, so it was a good trade. Our unfortunate cadet, whom everyone disliked, even himself, was also up there. Chad had gone to a maritime academy to play football. He didn't want to be a sailor at all. He didn't even want to pretend to learn this stuff. I hope he's okay and a thousand miles from sea. Anyway, Chad went down to the pilot ladder and escorted the pilot to the the bridge, which is a nice thing for cadets to do. Pilot plugged in his navigation cable and confirmed some info about the ship with the captain. Strength of bow thruster, width of ship, propeller style. Then he looked over and saw that I was still steering and Chad was essentially being hunky furniture. Okay, captain, we are close. Uh, is cadet really going to steer? I would prefer a helmsman. The mate locked eyes with me and probably saw the lava boiling behind my pupil. No, Chad is the cadet. This is my best helmsman. She will steer. Pilot throws up hands and starts trying to laugh it off, but no one is taking it, except maybe Chad. That was not quite the end of the BS from the pilot, but I'm not sure this was petty and intentional. He started by micromanaging the first turn and got us into such a pickle that the captain was within a second of legally overruling the pilot so he didn't crash into a seawall. I was staring at the captain and so urgently, I think I watched days being subtracted from his life. <laughs> but fell off. After that, he eased up on the micromanaging, and we got there safe. Phew! Jesus! The next Canadian pilot we encountered looked at me and said, Can you steer? Good. Follow the icebreaker through the fjord, and don't hit the cliffs. Yes, sir. Will do. That sounds badass. I want to learn to sail one day. It's gonna be really cool. It's gonna be like, uh, and I'm also gonna raid monasteries. <laughs> Where am I getting this from? I have no idea. I think I'm original. But anyway, OP, this is badass. I want to read more of your stuff because ships and stuff is cool. Or are cool. It is cool. Come on, Zach. Grammar. All right, this story's called, Yeah, I Get a Staff Discount. I'm staff. So this was last week. I'm at work. It's a Sunday. I'm at the end of my shift. I'm tired and I want to go home. I've just clocked out and am at the till with some fish treatment for a mate and some frozen food for my snake. As usual, the cashier gives me my staff discounts. We make conversation, but as there's someone else that wants to pay, I start to leave. That's when I hear this. I want a discount. 
I can't give you a discount, I'm afraid. I turn around at this, because I know Cashier is terrible with confrontation. Even me with my anxiety is better at arguing, and I've a feeling a manager may be needed, so it's best I stick around. Why not? She got one! She's pointing at me. The cashier calmly explains that I work here, so I'm entitled to a staff discount. She doesn't work here! I'm in here all the time and I've never seen her before! I go over to her and unzip my jacket so she can see my work polo underneath. The company name is clearly on it, and I have work keys on my lanyard around my neck with the company logo on it. Cashier is right, I do work here. No, you don't! She throws a dirty look in the cashier's direction. You two are friends, aren't you? She's giving you stuff cheaper because you're friends! I'll have you fired for this! I deserve a discount! The cashier looks on the verge of tears. You can either pay for your items and leave with them, or leave without them. It's your call. I deserve a discount! I end up going to get the manager from upstairs, and between us, the cashier, and two more staff members, we manage to get this woman to just pay for her stuff, full price, and go. I go home, get my rats in the freezer before they defrost, all is well. But that's not the end of it! The lady came back in today, while I was on the tills. She comes straight up to my till with a bunch of items and declares she usually gets a discount. I recognize her, and I've seen this scam before, though never from someone as brazen as this. Oh really? I've never seen you in here before. The lady points to a colleague. This colleague happens to be one of the ones who witnessed the ordeal last week. Ask him, he knows who I am. Oh yeah, she's the woman last week that demanded we give her a discount because she didn't believe you were here. The woman looks mad. If this were a cartoon, there'd be smoke coming out of her ears. Ah, that'll be total. I don't remember. It was pretty decent though. I believe she was buying a tank and set up so well over 500 quid probably. And my discount? I can't give you one, I'm afraid. You're new. I always get a discount. I've been here over two years, actually. Well, I've never seen you before. Really? Because that's what you said last week. That'll be total. The lady huffs, throws an air stone at me. Not sure if it was on purpose, but it hit me in the face. It's gonna bruise. I'm more annoyed that my colleague and I ended up having to reshelve all the stuff she left on my desk. Fish tanks are heavy. Oh, and the best part? Same colleague sent me a screenshot of a Google review this morning. That very woman had left a review saying we ruined her son's birthday because we wouldn't serve her. Called us rude and all the usual crap. Manager replied and chewed her out with the truth. What a lad. As someone who spent a few years behind the cash register, I love it when people try to pull the, I usually get a discount or whatever. It's funny because it's like, dude, my family owns this place. I've never seen you before. <laughs> it's always funny because like they think they, they have an in or something, but it's just, it's just embarrassing. It really is. But I, I don't, I don't hate the hustler. Okay. You know, nothing wrong with trying to save a buck, but if you're stupid and you fall for it, that's your own fault. All right, this story's called, I know, I installed it. IT guy here, worked in the field for almost 25 years, and now am considered a global expert in my specialty. I'm one of the people who made sure that anything on the internet was permanent, and had a hand in building a major cloud service. In the early 2000s, I was already considered an expert, and was asked by my employer to present about a product at a bank who had just purchased it. I was part of a team with two other guys. Each of us was going to give a technical presentation to the IT department. The first guy had been talking for about five minutes when someone entered the room and things started going downhill. He was heckling us. Well, when I was at, uh, insert major retailer, we had problems with that and blah blah blah. The guy had the most annoying, nasal snide voice just dripping with, I'm going to blather on about how smart I am by putting you down. God, I wanted to punch him. But even worse, I had to do my presentation in front of him. Maybe he'd stop after the first guy was finished. Oh no, he didn't. The next guy got up talking about a different but related product and its technical features, and he laid into him. Well, insert major retailer, had so much trouble with ISC. CSI that we had to blah blah blah. Oh, wonderful. What I didn't notice was how the other people in the room were reacting to him. He was getting the side eye. 
ESA DMF look. What is it? Oh, each shoot and die mother effer looks in blatant glares from all the IT guys there. In retrospect, why the manager there didn't just shut him up is still a mystery. So when my turn came, I decided to just plow through things and endure him. I started talking about my product and sure enough, he had to say something. Well, lad, in said major retailer, we had one of these and it gave us a lot of trouble with authenticating into Windows domain servers. This was before Active Directory came out. Not relevant to the story, but it gives the tech folks an idea of when. So I stood there and listened to him, just nodding along. I can feel this one no sweat. I know. I installed it. Dead. Silence. The OS was about 3.2 or 3.3, I think. I went on not realizing what had happened. Now we're on version 6, and if I remember right, it was a Windows authentication issue and works perfectly after a patch. Two seconds later, it hit me. Oh, crap! I just shut down the client! But I continued on with my presentation, and he left shortly afterwards, before I finished. All the IT guys came up and apologized, telling me he'd just come over from, insert major retailer, and couldn't stop talking about how they did things and why it was better. One guy said he was an ass and they couldn't stand him. Outside the bank, everyone was laughing and congratulating me for shutting him down, saying he'd stepped in it and stepped in it good. We were almost at lunch when we met the sales guy who had been on the phone, and the first thing he asked was, Who's Joe? Not my name. Me. Not certain how this was going to go, but he shook my hand. That was freaking brilliant. I was so mad at that jerk when you shut him up. I jumped up and down and started punching at the phone, yelling, Yes! 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 Take that, butthole! I've told that story over and over since. It never gets old and never has happened again. I honestly don't want it to. I'm a professional that takes great pride in my work, and he was the total opposite of one. It speaks volumes of their hiring practices that let someone like that get through. Congratulations, man, Mr. Badass Dude. <laughs> I must have felt pretty cool. Very, like, um, I don't know. The same energy of, like, uh, Kyle Gass and Tenacious D to pick a destiny, but, like, you actually have the, uh, the cred to back it up. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.